All right, guys, it's uh, another Thursday here. Um, Going to talk to you a little bit uh, about 8 scale and droop today, how we measure it, uh, why we measure it the way we measure it, um, things of that nature, um, and kind of go from there. Um, so the first thing, hopefully, if somebody's on, they could let me know that they can hear me okay. Um, I'm trying to use the two cameras today so that you can see the actual car a bit better. Um, and with that, I have to mute some stuff and unmute other stuff. And hopefully I got it right. Anyway, uh, we will get started uh, again. Okay, so cool. Ray, thank you for letting me know you can hear me. That's a good start. But uh, let's talk about Droop. Hey, Tim. Um, first things first, I want to talk about Droop and how we're measuring it these days on 8 scale. So in the past, we've used some digital calipers, and we've gone from the nice little dimple we have uh, to the middle of the screw here, right? So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to measure it that way right now. So traditionally, this is how we measured these. Went like this, turned this on, and we jammed this top in here and went to the middle of this screw, okay? And this left arm over here is 105 and a half right now, okay? Then we'd go to this other side and we'd make it the same. Right now, this side is um, just about 106.4, okay? So shock lengths wise, my two shocks are different lengths right now when it's fully extended. Um, but we're gonna check the droop how we check it today um, and, and just see. I just want kind of show you guys now, this car that I'm measuring is a car that has been around a long time. It, I, you know, it's an 8X 2.0, but it's been beat on pretty good. It ran the four hour enduro before the enduro, it got new front arms. And then um, after that, it was run again. So it's probably got, I mean, these arms probably have six hours of running on the front arms. So how we measure it today is we put the car on the droop blocks, which I'll give you the part number for those later on, but they're, they're just 36 millimeter droop blocks. Um, you wanna make sure your camber's set as it's supposed to be, because obviously, as your camber moves up and down, it's going to adjust where this thing sits. You measure it, okay? Let's hold this as steady as possible. You're going to measure droop up to this point right here, right? So it's basically the lowest point against the hex face, but under the round portion. It's a little flat in there that you can see, um, and that's what you measure it on. So you put them on two of these droop blocks here front row of the chassis on a nice flat surface. This is a plexiglass piece on a nice table. Uh, for the track, I have a, a surface that stays very flat. And then for the front, I run 28, which this is just a regular Gia ride height gauge. Turn it down a couple clicks is 28. And sure enough, that side's 28. And then I do the same thing on the other side and that side's 28. So. The reason I wanted to point that out is you guys saw me measure my shocks with calipers first, and they were different by 0.9 millimeters, right? If I would have set my, but I measured it from the actual reality of the height of this down, both are at 28 right now, right? It would have been different. So if I would have done it by just using calipers or measuring shock length, then my droop would have actually been different, meaning the distance from the car down to the dirt on the tires, the droop itself would have been different. Now I bring this up and the reason we changed to this method is this, it, it helps consistency, right? So our cars, I mean, I'm not the best driver in the world. I hit stuff. I flip, I crash. This was driven by four different people for four hours plus some. Um, arms are gonna tend to get tweaked or hit or whatnot over time. Now, if you're not changing arms all the time, which I'm not, I pretty much only change arms at the start of the year. Crazy, huh? 
um, before a big race, like I'll usually change them before DNC um, or I'll change them if they break. I, I usually change arms. That's about how often I change them. Um, things get tweaked. And this is the best opportunity to make sure that even if your arm's a little bit tweaked, you're still actually getting the same most consistent droop because you're measuring it properly. And you do the same thing, obviously, on the rear end. Um, so that's how we get our measurement. We put our chassis on droop blocks and we measure from a nice flat surface to the bottom of the round section here. Okay, so that's how we measure droop. We went over how and why we measure droop like this now. And again, these are just TLR's droop box. They come in a pack, you know, they pack up nice and clean so that this is all it takes in your pit box. Um, and those are, what are they, TLR 72004. Um, but a bunch of companies make them. They're just 36 millimeter flat carbon fiber. In this case, they're fiberglass pieces. Um, and there we go. So that's how you measure droop. Now let's talk about droop. And I'm going to actually read most of this from uh, what is our tuning guide that is posted on TLR's site. Um, let me actually copy and paste this link so everybody can find it if they want. Um, I'll post it right in here. And this is a tuning guide we put together sometime back um, when we did the 8X, uh, I think this we did this originally for the 8X Elite. But basically, uh, droop, you can obviously increase or decrease both the front and rear. Um, and the way you adjust that is, again, put it on the blocks. Okay, so two blocks. I didn't actually show adjusting it. And then depending on what you change it to, there's a droop screw right here with a two millimeter and you'll just tighten it, you know, basically turn it right. And then that'll bring this arm up. And if you loosen it, it brings the arm down, right? And when you go to measure it, you always do one of these numbers. You kind of put them on the blocks, give it a cycle, little tap down, measure it. Make a little change, cycle, little tap down, measure it, okay? That's what you're gonna do and how to adjust it. Um, the guide kind of talks, gives a, a, a very cut and dry of more droop, less droop, um, but kind of the, the overall, if you're adding droop to an end, so if you add droop to the front end, um, you're going to tend to decrease on power steering. And when I say more droop, it means the arms more down. So the, the tires, or in this case, the hex would be closer to the surface, more droop. So it's more drooped out. Um, you're going to tend to increase rear traction because it's basically droop really affects um, the way the weight in the car moves. So weight transfer fore and aft of the car and how much can transfer how quickly. Um, and so you get a little bit more rear grip usually uh, on corner exit. Um, in the rear, as you add droop, it usually increases off power steering because you're just allowing it to dump on the front. Uh, a little less stability under braking, um, but a lot of times a little bit more rear droop uh, on bumpy surfaces can actually give you the feeling of having more side bite in the rear. Um, that's not in here, but that's kind of what it does. And then if you give more droop to both at the same time, it's going to tend to accelerate better and jump and jumps. But because now the whole chassis can roll over more, right? Because now there's more movement before it wants to naturally stop. It can roll further. If you hit a bump and you've got a ton of uh, a droop front and rear, it's going to want to let it continue over because you're already so high of a CG. Uh, and kind of the opposite for less droop. The less droop you run, it's going to stop. Now, there's a tendency if you run too little droop that it kind of goes, and because the suspension's not making a nice smooth movement, it can kind of go and then the tires will come off and then it'll want to flip over too. So you got to kind of find that balance between enough droop for the whole car and not enough droop for the whole car for you and the way that you drive. Um, but in the front, if you have less droop, it tends to increase on power steering because you're not transferring as much weight. Um, and then in the rear, you're going to tend to increase stability under braking a little bit. Um, and again, droop, 
they can be powerful. And it's something I tend to go out and just have people do quarter turn movements on the wrench, you know, while I'm driving. And then I'll come in and measure it. What I kind of found was the best um, on that particular surface. Um, on my car, I'm pretty, pretty often 28, 25, because most of the surfaces I run on are pretty bumpy, pretty uh, loose-ish surface. The only time I, I'll usually take droop out from there. Um, so 28, 25 is about the max droop that I run. Um, but I'll, I'll go to less droop if, uh, like, I'm on a hard uh, packed surface. Um, but, yeah. That's kind of droop. I got the question today. Somebody asked about it. I'm like, hey, I'll do tonight's tech tip on it. Um, so I tried to set up as quick as possible. Hopefully uh, that helped everybody out. Because I have seen people measuring to the bottom of the hex before or people with different height blocks or whatnot. But that's what the number means. Whenever we're putting it on a setup sheet, we're using a 36 millimeter block. It's off and we're going to the bottom of the round portion, You know, the part that you put the wheel nut on of the hex. Okay, guys. So hopefully that helps out. Again, if you've ever got suggestions for tech tips you want to see, um, please just shoot me a message. I'd be happy to do one because it's it's kind of nice for other people to have the ideas. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, but uh, yeah, hopefully everybody's getting ready to have a Merry Christmas. Um, not sure if I'm going to be able to do one next week. Uh, I think I might not be able to, but uh, if I don't talk to anybody before then, have a very Merry Christmas, a very good and safe New Year's, um, and have some fun racing. Hopefully you get some time off. You can get to the track. I'll be there tomorrow having some fun, um, trying to help out as much as possible. So anyway, have a great day, guys.